Well, thanks very much, Daniel, for coming along today. It's not a problem. Uh, first of all, could you describe to us a little bit about what your role entails? Yeah, uh, the VPCC role um, is two roles amalgamated um, from the Vice President of Communications um, and the campaigns role was introduced um, into that role. Um, my role as in terms of communications is managing the media managers um, and the disimmediate outlets um, as well as dealing with publications um, and any external or internal media. Campaigns role is liaising with the rest of the exec and any campaigns they wish to run um, as well as looking into any other campaigns in terms of political campaigns or anything else like that. Okay, when you took the role, was there anything that took you by surprise, like anything that you didn't expect that you had to be responsible for? Um, not in terms of well, not in terms of being responsible. I suppose it was more in terms of um, how much uh, how much there was to do in certain areas, um, and where I thought things were, or a standard I thought things were at, and um, didn't seem to be the case. Um, and it was also kind of about managing time. And initially, where I thought it was very much kind of a nine to five job. Um, Especially for the first few months, it turned out to be like a nine to nine job, and um, because I kind of let it get, you kind of let the place throw you in, and, and you get very passionate about the work that you're doing, and you continue to work, um, and you kind of forget you need to go home. Yeah, could you give us some examples of, of those things? Those kind of examples of yeah. things that have happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, in my f uh, in my first semester, anyway, um, as well as there's a document produced each year, which is the annual report which is quite a lengthy document, details everything that DUS has done over the past year and it's the VPC's role to put it together um, and work with the graphic design and marketing team. Um, so on top of doing that, I was also trying to work on a new structure along with the different media managers as well as running induction days um, and also liaise with one of my uh, policies was to kind of get a new, um, a better use of my Dundee or try to get some involvement with and do so with my Dundee and I was trying to do that and I was coming up against brick walls so trying to do all those things at once um, was very much uh, took up a lot of my time. Okay well speaking about your policies could you give us a quick recap? Yeah of course um, I had three policies um, which I had many other policies as well but the three main policies I kind of campaigned on were to instigate a revamp of do so facilities and by that meant both um, a digital revamp as well as a physical revamp um, also the as I've already mentioned, kind of a revamp of the uh, the My Dundee service, or even try to start something, um, our new way of approaching My Dundee. Um, and the third one was kind of get more students involved and to streamline the current ways that students engaged um, with DUSA and the university as a whole. Okay, could you tell us about some of the things of DUSA's facilities that you have revamped so far? Yeah, um, well, I can, I can, uh, well, you may be aware there's a new website that's just been created. I've had a played a large part in that along with the previous VPC, uh, Nav Cornwell, and he last year um, worked on a part with Rob and I worked very heavily with Rob this year to get up and running, came online in January. Um, in terms of the physical side, uh, we've been working with um, the senior managers here at DUSA to look at our uh, capital funding um, and to kind of ensure that the funding is available for the revamp. And Mono, uh, currently, there's probably been um, a lot of noise in the other interviews over the past couple of days. Mono's currently going under um, a revamp at the minute to kind of bring its facilities up to a better standard. And over the next couple of uh, over the next couple of years, there'll be a lot of different things going on in DUSA, but all the, very much that's kind of been started with last this year and last year to try and get the ball rolling. Could you tell us a bit more about what you've done with the website? Yeah, I mean. The website previously was hosted by a different company um, and therefore it limited what we could do with it and how we could use it. Um, so what we've done is we've taken the website under our domain and that was um, contracted out to ICS. They created the website um, in conjunction with us and now we have complete control over it. So really we're trying to increase the usability of the website, make it more um, user friendly um, and also it allows us to host information in a different way. Um, hopefully, we're only just getting our grips to put up ways to use it, but there's so many different things that can be incorporated into it. Um, and one of the things I want to see developed over the next while is kind of the dis media section of it, um, because obviously online media is plays a huge part in society and everybody uses it now, and I'd like to see our media outlets fully utilise that. And with a tool such as our new media website hosted upon our new overall website, I think it's a great opportunity there. Okay, that's great. Um, have you got anything else that you're going to do just in the union itself? Kind of physically revamping. Yes and no. It's very difficult. Um, obviously, whenever you set out to start something, you've, uh, you're very uh, 
you're very forceful and you want things to happen very, very quickly, but obviously there's a lot of procedures and stuff. So what we're seeing in Mono has been kind of the culmination of a lot of work put in by a lot of people um, within the within the union. And it's kind of just ensuring that the uh, the support is there and to kind of what what I sit on the duty managers meeting um, and I kind of convey the thoughts of the students and the exec to the duty managers and everything that they do. Um, and one of those things is a revamp of the facilities and to say, well, why don't we try this? So this facility would be better if it was this way or whatever. And sometimes that's completely wrong. Sometimes it's right. It's very much just giving a student opinion upon the things that are stated. But hopefully, as a result of that, different things can be developed and we can move forward. OK. Um, apart from the My Dusa tab on My Dundee, which is just, I understand, a PDF with the Dusa structure layout that links you to the website? It, it's slightly different, but yeah, yeah. Because one of your policies was to develop it. Um, are you going to do anything else with it before your term's over? Yes and no. I mean, <laughs> it it seems very small on the sli on the face of it, but actually, it's uh, it was a lot of work even just to get that on it. And my Dundee is a very um, a very valuable asset of the university because obviously it has access to the entire student community. Therefore, to get any um, accessibility to it in terms of DUSA um, was deemed to be impossible in the past, and indeed many people it was impossible. Whenever I suggested that was what I was going to set out to do, so whenever I achieved that small thing, I mean, I was very very. Um, proud to have done so um, and this has been very much a trial period to see how it's been moving forward and whether people have been using it and hopefully um, I've set the, the kind of the foundations for it to be developed past that. We've already spoken with um, ICS um, provisionally about how that can be developed further and I hope the VPCC next year and um, however that may be um, along with me liaising with them at the start can talk about how it can be developed further to allow different feeds to be created within that and for it to um, move past the seedling that it is now. What were some of your ideas that you wanted to get done? Very much um, kind of about, it. My Dundee is a great service and it allows students to see, get all the material and stuff, but it doesn't, if you want to communicate with another student in your class or something along those lines, you automatically go to Facebook. And it seems very counterintuitive for students to go to Facebook whenever there's obviously a service there that allows you to get in contact directly with students within your class and be to create a system whereby you could contact students within that through instant messaging or something along those lines, as well as different blogs and things to be hosted within My Dundee, because it seems like an appropriate platform for all that information to be hosted upon. Okay, that's great. Um, you said you wanted to streamline the platforms for student input to create a more efficient service, ensuring the students' views are accu accurately represented. Um, could you explain a little bit more about how you're making sure that our views are accu accurately represented? Yeah, of course. Um, there are different things we're trying to do, do that are trying to do to ensure that. Um, the SRC this year um, has actually produced a number of different motions that have been very interesting, and there's been we've kind of encouraged to be amongst that. Um, also, one of the things I'm liaising with our um, online marketing manager at the minute um, to try and utilise different aspects, different widgets that can be added to the website as it currently stands, um, because obviously, obviously, we've not had that potential before. The ideal situation be that being that the website um, becomes more than just a website, actually becomes a tool to allow to allow us um, to engage with the students and get their feedback. And um, we have been trying to work hard this year to try and ensure that whenever there are um, different issues brought up by the student community, we react as quickly as possible. One of those has been that uh, previously in the year there were issues regarding um, the use of slang terms and um, derogatory terms or deemed derogatory terms um, in posters and we looked at that as an exec and um, after discussion of depth or in-depth discussions with the FOC and stuff we came to the conclusion that we would support the students for using that and that um, we as an organisation um, would not use those kind of derogatory terms in the future and um, to try and ensure that everybody's views are equally represented and nobody's offended in that sense. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, what do you think is your biggest personal achievement this year? Um, the biggest personal achievement? I, I don't know, I mean it, it's very difficult, very, very little that you do within the organisation is independent, um, you don't really do very much, it's just your own work as such. Uh, one of the things that I'm I'm probably most proud that's been achieved this year um, thus far um, has been the the development of the media outlets as a whole and that's been with the media managers who have done a great job this year in bringing them on from where they were last year especially even just the TV and the setup and everything is not something that we've happened last year um, and I think that with with the way things are standing and stuff and discussions talking about how DUSA TV can be used to, and DUSA media as a whole should be invested in and because it's obviously a way to engage with the students that we've never really considered in as much depth before and hopefully, I mean, if, if that was the one thing that I was to leave um, after helping develop this year, I'd be happy with that um, because I think that 
student media is, plays a very important part in kind of the student experience as a whole and hopefully that can be developed upon after this year. Okay, so what about your biggest failure? My biggest failure? Um, I, suppose my, I suppose my biggest failure has been that whenever I... It's very difficult, whenever you come into the role you're all bright eyed and you think that you can kind of do things very very quickly and, and even with the policies and every individual's policies um, at the very very start whenever the exec meets you go through everybody's policies and you turn, you deem which ones are viable which will benefit the students community is the best and they become part of the manifesto and then you work upon that manifesto um, and you work, well, you work, you work tire, tirelessly towards that but you're under the illusion almost that this is an easy thing to do and as is evidence with the My Dundee tab it was incredibly hard just to get something as small as that to do and it kind of, I think I would advise all future execs to come in understanding um, the responsibility and the difficulties that they'll face when they try to get things done. I mean you have to really persist um, to try and ensure that the students views are represented and that things are put into place. Okay. What can we expect to see from you for the rest of the year? Uh, there's a couple of things. Up until now a lot of my time has been kind of taken up with different publications and um, kind of the communications aspect of my job, especially dealing with Dissimedia Media and um, recently at the weekend, or the weekend just passed, uh, the appointments took place to the new media managers, which, very, which is a new process but was very successful. I uh, hope it continues in years to come. Um, over the next period, going to be concentrating more on the campaigns kind of side of the job. Um, so there are two different kind of campaigns we're looking to run now. One's a political campaign, which I'm working with Ian Kennedy and the Five Million Questions um, to try and ensure that um, an exciting campaign comes to the university that, on a scale not seen before. Um, the other campaign that I'm looking to develop is in very early stages at the minute, but it's not such a campaign, but it, it kind of is to try and bring the university's attention to technological developments at other institutions and how we would like how it could benefit the student community if our university was to develop our technology to kind of match the world leading competitors. Yeah, I actually meant to ask you about the campaigns. Have you have you done any yet or is it just these ones that you're planning? No, I mean it, 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 as I said as I said earlier, I mean no, no exec works independently and w whenever it comes to the campaigns um kind of side role or side of it, um different individuals in the exec run the different campaigns and I liaise with them on that. So um Sarah Get Good um runs campaigns um, in regards to student welfare um, and Anna Dimitrova has already done, a ra uh, done the RAG week and over the next few weeks she's going to be looking into the international festival and that's another campaign that we're running and I kind of liaise with the different parties throughout that to ensure that everybody has support they need and the campaigning role um, is kind of it's one that oversees what a lot of what everybody else does and allows me to work with individuals where they need it. Um, when they take the front, whenever they take the kind of the primary lead in those roles, I support them in any way possible to ensure that they're kind of successful, which I think has been evidence this year. And hopefully, with these campaigns, both myself and um, Ian and Anna and everyone else tries to run in the rest of this year are equally successful, if not more so. Okay, could you tell us a wee bit more about the campaigns that you're planning yourself? Um, Yes and no. Uh, the campaign, the political campaign, with five, well, hopefully with five million questions, is looking to take place in April. Hopefully to bring some um, political speakers to the university and a campus debate, um, whereby there'll hopefully be an interview process. I'd like to have it covered by Dussie Media, um, whereby there'll be questions asked about uh, the referendum and the effect that will have on higher education. Um, so hopefully it'll be something that will really engage in students because it's obviously something that will have a large effect on students. Um, but we'll, <laughs> we'll have to see. Hopefully it'll develop over the next over the next few weeks, but it's something they're pushing very hard to get in place. The other campaign, or I suppose, uh, to kind of get a recognition in the university towards developing technology is something that I'm personally very um, keen to push forward, and hopefully that'll take place in May. Um, and it'll be based upon uh, technologies that are available at all the universities and how our university can utilise the experience of other institutions to kind of further ours. Okay. More examples on that? Uh, unfortunately, I can't. Otherwise, I could potentially um, damage the chances of the campaign happening. Okay, that's fair enough. What do you think you've learned most while being in this position? Um how to manage my time and expectations. Um, I think that as I said at the very start of the, the, very start of the year, um, I kind of 
was under an illusion of what my expectations were to an extent. Um, I had very high expectations of what I wanted to achieve. And I have achieved um, a lot of those expectations, but there's still some that I want to achieve and may not achieve at the end of the day. And equally manage my own time and recognising that it, it is a job at the end of the day and therefore it can only take up so much of your life and you have to sort of have something outside of that. Um, and hopefully that's something I can carry through into the rest of my life and not just be working for the duration of every day of my life. And if you could give one piece of advice to the future VPCC, what would it be? Um, it would be to manage their time and to have a structured approach to everything because I think everything, if you have a structured approach, um, then it's easier for people to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Okay. Okay, from what you remember of the video, what's your reaction? Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, we've been aware of this since student executives um, throughout both the UK and indeed um, past student executives at Dundee have all faced this kind of problem. Um, students are generally becoming more so apathetic towards kind of student politics, which is a shame, and there are different things and different ways that we can kind of counter that. There are more political societies um, in, in the university now than there ever has been, and we're pushing towards that. But equally, as an organisation, one of the tools that we think can kind of counter this apathy in future is to kind of develop our, our media outlets and invest in them, which is what we're doing. And um, one of my goals this year has been to try and raise the quality of the media outlets. And I think that by doing that, we kind of provide a forum for students to kind of get interested, to see what the news is, to see kind of what's going on within the university. And my hope is that by developing the media outlets, that could in turn kind of start the ball rolling with trying to uh, increase more engagement and more awareness. But equally. It's very difficult. I mean, what the what the student executive does isn't on a day to day basis doesn't really concern every student to a certain extent. In terms of, it's not in very commas like kind of sexy. It's it's kind of just running the our standard practice, if you will. Um, I sit in numerous committees. Um, there was a history review recently, and not every student cares about a history review. In fact, a lot of students are finding it the most boring thing unless you're a history student. But the point is that we're here whenever students need us. Um, and Rachel Doherty deals with appeals and, and um, we all deal with students on a daily basis um, and we're always here for students and the point about the exec is that we run these campaigns and we do all these different things to try and engage more students but probably the most important thing is that we're here at the highest level in the university to kind of ensure that whenever a student needs something um, or whenever they need their view to be getting across we are there to kind of ensure that that's kind of um, implemented in some form um, I think that's a, a really important aspect of what we do. Have you got any suggestions as to how you or the future exec could raise your profile? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's something that we're looking at at the minute, and I actually um, produce, or the, the VPCC produces a strategic document called the Communication Strategy, and I'll be um, updating that um, dramatically um, over the next few months um, before I leave office. Um, and the things that I'll probably be suggesting will be the, um, the further development and investment into the media as a whole. Um, hopefully um, to kind of integrate it more with what we do here. We have a great marketing department here um, and well, it's UK leading um, and I'd like to get more, Both I think both sides can really benefit from it because it can benefit the organisation the more professional Dissa Media becomes um, but equally for the members of Dissa Media to kind of be around those kind of like in sorry be within that professional atmosphere allow them to develop as individuals as well and um, other ways of doing it I think that we kind of we've got this new website now um, but we're also stumbling onto the ideas of one of the most popular things this year has been the videos produced by just a TV and video advertising and video marketing is something that's kind of growing exponentially um, and I think that we can utilize that to kind of increase awareness of DUSA and increase the kind of perception of what DUSA does and everything. Okay, Maggie, any other questions? Future plans. Oh, yeah. Future plans for yourself. For yourself. Oh, for myself? Yes. Um, yeah, well, whenever I leave, I'll be looking for a job. Um, I have a couple of different business opportunities that I'm looking into and a couple of different options, um, but I can't speak for them about now because nothing's confirmed and I would not to compromise any potential opportunities.